Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Nice to see you guys. Thank you so much for jumping on here. I see lots of familiar faces that I think have been here for a couple of days before. So this is day eight of the 12 days of command. My name is Sydney Seymour. I'm the regional technology trainer for the Keller Williams Carolinas region and so excited to bring and deliver this to you. Um, so if you guys can do me a favor and what we'll talk about today, just a question that I want to know in chat, just for my own personal understanding is, have you attended any other 12 days? of command. So is this your first one or have you attended other ones? So just drop your answer in chat just so that we can see if we have some new faces here or if we have people that have made sure that they're attending maybe every single session. So just drop your response in chat. Um, while you guys are doing that, I'm going to pull up a couple of resources that I'm going to drop in chat for you as well. Um, the first one is going to be a link to our YouTube channel. Um, so that's going to take you to our YouTube channel that's going to have all of the recordings from the 12 days of command, as well as some other little features that we have in there. So the first link that I just dropped in there will take you to our YouTube channel. The second link is going to take you to our regional Facebook page. That Facebook page is going to have a list of all the 12 days of command. Um, so the ones that we'll have continuing moving forward for the next few days, as well as a couple next week. And then the last two are going to be links to the help or the answers articles of what we are going to chat about today. So I will drop that in chat, just drop that in there for you. Um, if anybody jumps on later, you guys have to jump on or off. I will do the same thing at the end of the class. If you weren't able to grab it at the beginning, I'll do that there. Um, and it looks like we've had a couple of you guys that are here but for the first time. Lucy wins an award. She's attended all of these except for one. So Lucy, thank you for continuing to show up. And then we've got some that this is your first one. So thank you guys for being here. Um, so I'm just going to move a couple things around on my screen, share my screen, and we're going to get ready to rock and roll because we have a lot of really great stuff that we're going to cover together today. So let me just share my screen. Let me move the chat over here. And then as a reminder, um, at any time, you guys, if you have questions or we, we want to discuss anything or chat around anything, it's completely up to you. If you'd like to unmute yourself and just ask your question or have conversation around anything, that is awesome. I'm completely down for that. Um, if you're more comfortable typing a question in chat or putting any sort of response in chat, you're welcome to do that as well. I've got that pulled up on my second monitor over here, so I'll be able to look at that all together. So what we're going to talk about today, um, it's going to be opportunity checklist and then opportunity checklist is what's also going to unlock a feature that we're also going to talk about. So the first thing that we're going to start with are those opportunity checklists. So if we backtrack just a little bit, when we think of opportunities, opportunities are what you are going to use probably the most in command. It's, it might be what you're the most familiar with if you're using command to get paid where you're entering your transactions, you're doing all of that. We're doing that in opportunities. So just do me a favor so that I just have a clear understanding of kind of the mixture of everybody in the Zoom. Um, just do me a favor and just type a yes or no in chat. If have you ever used command and created an opportunity and gotten paid through your market center using command? So just a yes or a no. Um, have you done that yet in command? Okay, great. So we're getting a lot of yeses, a couple of no's. So awesome. Glad you guys are here. So we're not going to talk about how to create an opportunity today. We're not going to really go through that. However, you're in luck because tomorrow at 10 a.m., the workshop that we'll be hosting is um, from contract close. So it'll actually walk you through creating the opportunity, doing everything that you need to do through the opportunity. So for those of you that feel like you're not maybe quite up to speed on that, that would be a great workshop. That's tomorrow. Same Zoom link tomorrow at 10 a.m. And that'll be a 30 minute workshop with actually um, a guest facilitator, Tracy Haswell, who is the MCA out of Hendersonville will be leading that. So that'll be a great workshop tomorrow. So what we're gonna talk about today are creating those opportunity checklists. So remember, we're gonna get into command by going to agent.kw.com. That's gonna take us into command. Over on the left-hand side of the screen are all of the command applets. At any point in time, if we're not super familiar with the applets, we can keep on, click on the red box at the top left, and that allows us to open up that menu where we can see everything through there. 
So we're going to go into opportunities, which looks like the two little hands that are shaking. And right next to that, it says opportunities. Now, opportunities for a lot of you, you're really familiar with this. This is essentially your pipeline. So this is where we can see what do we have in our listing pipeline that either we're cultivating or it's an appointment or anything that we're working through for that. What do we have there? Um, we can see the same thing under the pipeline with the buyer. So we can see everything nice and neat here. What we are going to talk about today, though, are checklists. So um, we'll make this a group discussion. So do me a favor. Um, would you rather talk about when a seller goes under contract or when a buyer goes under contract. So we'll take a nice little vote. So drop your answer in chat. Do we want to talk about buyers going under contract or do we want to talk about sellers going under contract? So just a buyer or a seller. Okay. Looks like we have votes for buyers. So we're going to go with buyer. All right. So we're going to talk about buyers, you guys. So we're going to talk about when a buyer goes under contract and some things that we would want to add. Now to go in and to create these checklists that we're going to talk about, we first need to go into opportunities. So again, all we've done so far is just clicked into command, entered our username and password, gone into opportunities. We're going to decide which of these stages do we want to create the checklist for. So we said that we're going to work with buyers. So we're going to come right down here. We're going to pick that buyer checklist. And then we're going to talk about when we have a buyer and they go under contract, what do we want to make sure that we're always doing? What do we want to make sure that never slips through the cracks? So to do that and to set up that checklist, all that we're going to do is right here where we've got under contract, we're going to click right on that. And then you'll notice that there are points where my screen might look different than yours. We might have different custom stages. That's completely fine, right? So if at this point it starts to look that stage names are different, don't worry about that at all. We're under contract. So we're going to say, we're, let's talk about the inspection period. So we have a buyer, we're under contract, we're in the inspection period, and we're going to say this is the stage or the time frame or the period that we want to create that checklist for. So again, all we've done is we clicked into the phase that we want to edit. So I picked under contract. And then in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I want to work on this inspection, right? So to do that, all I have to do is come right up here to the right, very, very tippity top of the page where it says edit stages. So again, I just went into the stage that I want to edit. I'm going to click on that. And then you'll see that we've got all of the different stages that we have under that phase. Now, if I don't like some of these stages, so if I find that I created a stage at some point and I'm like, I don't even know why I created that or what I was thinking at that point in time, I can delete a stage by just clicking on the trash can. I can edit a stage by just clicking on the little pencil right over here. We're gonna talk about inspections and we're gonna come up with a checklist together. So I'm gonna stop talking for just a moment and give you guys a little bit of time to either unmute yourself and tell me or drop in chat. If we had a buyer and they were in the inspection phase, what are some items that we would want to make sure we are always doing that we want to stay on top of? And you guys can either drop it in chat or feel free to unmute yourself with your responses as well. But we're going to build this checklist out together. Okay, so we would want the inspection date. Okay, so we want to actually order. I'm going to word it a little bit differently. That's fine. Um, I'm going to schedule the date. So we're going to, you see, we typed this one thing that we want to do. We're going to hit save. And then that one little thing right here. So we're going to follow up. So we'll add the next item. I see we're going to make sure that the report has been received. So we're going to say, make sure. Has been received. We're going to save that. We're going to follow up. So we might say another item is we're going to follow up with the okay. create a, a repair request. Okay, great. This is where you guys get to see how good of a speller I am. Okay, we're going to do that. 
discuss what repairs. Okay, so we're gonna have a conversation. Okay, so we're gonna add that one, we're gonna save that. And then we're gonna negotiate that. So we're gonna work on negotiate. That's easy. Okay, so we're gonna negotiate that. And then we're going to complete the final request. Perfect. And then verify. Okay, so we're gonna say we're gonna track. Okay, perfect. Anything else you guys, last second items that we wanna add? This might not be all of it. This is just what we're gonna come up with now. So anytime that something falls under inspections, this is everything that we wanna make sure we're doing. Now let's say that we just went in and we did everything that we thought of and we just typed everything out. And now we realize I actually wanna like reorder a little bit, right? So I wanna actually, I wanna have a conversation with the buyers before I create the repair request. So I wanna actually take this and I wanna move this up. So I just wanna reorder the way in which I want these to happen. You'll see these six little dots over here that allows you to basically grab one of these and move these up and down. So we can completely decide what order do we want those to appear in. Now I'm gonna hit save. I'm gonna go back out and back in so that we can all kind of watch this one more time of how we got here. Cause it's very easy once you have an understanding but we just need to leave a couple breadcrumbs for ourselves. So we went under buyers, we went in under contract. That's basically, that's the phase that I wanna create this checklist for. And then we did it under inspections. So all I did is I came right up here to edit stages. I said the inspection stage checklist is what I wanna come in and edit. We're gonna click on that. And then this is where we added everything. Now let's say I realized that I added something and I'm just, I don't know, I, I worded it weird or I no longer need it. If I hover over any of these items, I can click on the three dots. I can edit the item, which allows me to just reword or change anything, or I can delete it. If I find like, I actually kind of created that twice or I'm no longer doing that or things have changed, I can do that. And then again, we just wanna make sure we're hitting that save button. So I'm gonna pause for just a second, just to see if anybody has any questions around how to just create the checklist. Pretty straightforward, right? Yeah. So then if we wanted to go in and we said, okay, now I need to actually create the same checklist or a different checklist rather, but I want to do it under clear to close. So under clear to close, I want to make sure that I call the buyers and I remind them what they need to bring to the closing table. I make sure that we have, you know, I call the listing agent and how do we have the keys? Do we have garage door openers? Do we have all of that? Have we scheduled the final walkthrough? So if I wanted to create that checklist, I would do the same thing. I would just come into clear to close. I would click right on that, click on add item, type out what I want, and then move down and just hit that save. Now, here's what's pretty cool is when I go back, you'll see that this particular transaction is under the inspection stage. And so because we have a checklist under inspection, right down here, it says zero out of seven. So the checklist that I've created is all right here. Now let's say that I move this over here under escrow, you'll see that the checklist completely moves away because I don't have a checklist for that escrow period right here. However, when I take it and I move it right back over here to inspections, we're gonna change right there and it goes back to that zero out of seven. So you're essentially only creating a checklist one time and then every single time that an opportunity falls or lives under that particular stage, that checklist is going to be assigned to it. Um, I see we have a hand, go ahead. Hi. Hi. Yes. Hi. Well, being brand new to this, uh, where do you get the checklist to even know to make the checklist? Like, um, in other words, command doesn't already have a pre-made checklist of, oh, I need to do this, 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 and this. You have to put it in. 
right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So um, because command is at a national level, it's so oh. dependent based off of states or locals. However, what I find is most market centers have some sort of checklist. Um, so I would either ask your market center tech trainer or your MCA or your productivity coach, because they probably have a checklist and you actually could copy and paste. So a lot of times I find they have it in Excel or a Google sheet. So we could copy that, add it all out, and then you would be done. Perfect. Thank you. Of course. Um, what does the 90% mean? So that's a great question. So that means that's your conversion rate. So it means that for something that falls here under inspections, there's a 90% chance that that's going to actually get to closing. So um, the more that you basically feed it, the more that it starts to understand that. And so if we really start to see this is actually a 95% rate, then that will change there. But that's a great question. Good eyes on catching that. <laughs> um, all right, let's talk about the bonus feature, which I think if you're going to use anything in command, use this in my humble opinion. <laughs> so once we've created the checklist, you might have noticed that next to the checklist for every single one of these items, we have what we call a client update. So let me ask you guys, and I'll have you just type a yes or no in chat. Would it be valuable to you for your buyer in this instance? So would it be valuable to you for your buyer to automatically know when the inspection has been ordered? when the inspection report has been reviewed, uh, when you're negotiating the repair request, would that be valuable for your buyer to have an understanding of? If we talk about it on the seller side, would it be valuable if we're thinking about that we have a new listing, would it be valuable for your seller to know we've scheduled an open house, we've gone off the neighborhood with marketing pieces, you know, we've created a broker's open where we're gonna get all the agents in our office. So would that be valuable to you guys? Okay, awesome. Um, have you guys ever, and you can either just drop a yes in chat or like, give me a thumbs up or raise your hand. Have you ever worked with a lender where during the process, your buyers are getting those updates of the file is now in underwriting. The file is here, right? Have you guys ever gotten that? It's similar to like that Domino's pizza tracker. If you've ever used that of like, everything is being done. This is very similar to that. So client updates are really fantastic because What's, what's interesting is the number one complaint that most buyers or sellers have about their real estate agent is the lack of communication. Um, and it's not that you don't want to commu communicate with them. It's that you're doing everything that you can to hold the deal together or to do all of these different things. And so you don't necessarily have the time every day to call them and say, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened. So what we really wanted to deliver to you as agents is a system that can allow you to automate what you choose to. So again, this is your choosing. So to automate what you choose to, and then you could just follow up with the phone calls as well. So let's say that we say, okay, as soon as I do this and I come in and mark this task as complete, I want the client to be updated about. Yep, I want that to happen. As soon as I make sure that the inspection report has been received, I want the client to be updated. Um, as soon as I follow up with the inspector on any outstanding issues or I have the buyer do that or I schedule that, I want the client to be updated. So I don't have to decide it's not a one size fits all, meaning I could have all of these checklist items and I could determine which of these I want the client to be updated about. So I could have checklists that are just for myself of like, did I do this? Did I do that? Did I do this? And then I could have items that are for the client where perhaps we're wording it differently, right? So if we think about on the seller side, rather than we door knocked the neighborhood, we might say we door knocked 250 homes around the neighborhood for that. So just think of how do we want the buyer or the seller to receive this? Um, are they updated via email or text? It's email and I'll show you specifically what that looks like. So first I have to decide which of these items do I want the client to be updated about? And then I'm just gonna hit close. Now what's really nice is you'll notice that client updates can be turned off or on on a transaction basis. So you might say, you know, I don't really want this particular buyer to be updated about anything because they're an investor and they just want to be updated once we have a closing date, right? Or 
I don't want these sellers to be updated automatically mm -hmm. because they need a bit more hand holding and they just like the automation they don't love and they just I know that I'm going to have to have more phone calls with them so I don't want it so you can decide for each opportunity for each transaction what you want to do here and we do that really easily you can see we've got client updates right here and then it says off next to it so I have the ability to see what's off or what's on so once I go into the actual opportunity itself next to that checklist item it says client updates once I click on client updates, it allows me to say, do I want to send daily progress emails for this opportunity? So let's think about this and how we can make this a win and add this to your value proposition when you're at the listing presentation or when you're working with buyers at the buyer's presentation. So if you can say to your first time home buyers, I completely understand that throughout the transaction process, communication is probably very, very important to you. So in addition to my bi-weekly phone calls with you, where I'll call you twice a week, I'm going to make sure that you get emails anytime anything is done during the transaction that you need to know about. So let me ask you, what time of day would it be best for you to receive those emails? And they might say, well, like I work eight to five and I really don't have time to look at anything during that time. So if you could send it after 5 p.m., that would probably be best. So I can come in again on a one-off basis and say, yes, number one, I want to turn these on. And then what time do I want these to be sent out? And if they said 5 p.m., we're always going to do better than that. So we're going to send it at 4.30 p.m. So every time that you come in here and say, I completed this, they're going to receive no more than one email a day of what you've marked as complete. And I'll show you what the email looks like. It's going to come from you. And then this is really nice. It's going to tell you down here who it's going to be sent to. And I can add contacts. So let's say you're working with those first time home buyers and they say, I also really want my dad to know what's happening because he's helping me purchase the house or there's additional people or you're selling a house and there's a will or an estate and there's four people that need to know what's going on. We can add additional contacts that aren't involved in this opportunity directly from here. And then all we're going to do down here is click save changes. And then you'll notice that when I go back into opportunities, I go back into my buyers under contract. You'll notice that this has changed. Client updates are now on. And so the way that this works, we said that everything was going to be delivered at 430 by my watch. It's like 222 right now. So if I go in and say this has been done. This has been done and this has been done. It's going to hold this and it's going to send this at 430. And it's going to say, these are the three items that have been done today. Tomorrow, if I come in and I say, I want my client to be updated about this and this. And tomorrow at nine o'clock in the morning, I say, this has been done. And then at four o'clock in the afternoon, I say, this has been done. They will receive one email tomorrow with these two. So it's basically within that 24 hour window before the next one is potentially sent out, anything that you've marked as complete is gonna go through there. So let's talk about what this looks like. So again, you have to come in and mark this as complete, right? So I can't just say, I want the client to be updated. And then if I never come in and say, this is done, they're not gonna know it's done. So I have to make sure I'm coming in and saying this is done. And then I'll show you, cause I sent one to myself earlier. This is how it would come across. Um, so it would have your branding at the top up here. This would be your client's name. However, they're entered into command. We're checking things off the list. Here's a summary of tasks completed for. I didn't have an address for my property, so that's why it comes across as that. So call sellers twice a week, done. Listing input into MLS, done. Submit for compliance review, done. Buyer side at every step, Sydney, branded to you. Download my app, branded to you at the bottom. So this again, no more than one email a day and never a blank email. So I think that's definitely worth noting. It's never going to be delivered to them and say, your agent didn't do anything today. So again, what we have to do first is number one, create the opportunity checklist. And then once we've done that, once we come in and say, done, 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 holds on to those until the time the email is being sent, sent all of that. 
Um, Nancy, when you check items and the email is sent, does the item fall off the list? So we can come in here, we can hide completed items if we'd like to, if we no longer want to see them. If we can want to continue to see them, we can keep that and they will stay there. They will just have this little scratch through and complete by them. So you can see that that way. Yeah, of course. Um, I do wanna show you guys, we talked about buyers on this. I wanna show you one little thing that's just a, a tiny little nuance with sellers on this. So let's say that we had a seller that was under contract and we wanted to do the same thing for them. I'll go into the opportunity. Um, just remove that. Okay. You'll notice that when you go into a seller opportunity, you will have a section right here that says select from listings. So if I click right on here and your listings will all show up here so we could pull it in. But let's say that I say, yep, this is my listing. You'll notice then the listing address changes to the correct address, first of all, which is important. But here's what's really cool. On the seller side, when I send out client updates, it's going to actually have the first photo of the MLS property right here, as long as I've pulled the listing in. So we can't do it on the buyer side because you don't have the rights to the photo. Um, if it was your listing, you could, but on the listing side, as long as we went in and basically claimed that listing, which is as easy as when we're in the opportunity, again, coming right up here, choosing select from listings, and then pulling in the listing that way. Then it will always have the first photo from MLS there, um, which is just really nice, a nice little kind of line on that. So I'm gonna pause for just a second, just to see what questions or conversation we have around this at all. I'd love to hear from you guys, just a yes or no in chat, who's gonna start using this? If you, if you aren't already, um, just a yes or a no, if you are, aren't, okay. Hello. Hi. Hi, um, I followed you in the checklist under one particular opportunity. Is there a way to do a general checklist for all your opportunities? So the checklist will always show up. So if I go back into buyers under contract, we're creating the checklist under the stage, not the opportunity. So okay. every single time that an opportunity falls under that stage, that checklist will automatically be there. Okay, all right, yeah. great. Yeah, great question, thank you. Um, yeah, I love yeah. that you guys are gonna use this because I have to tell you like, clients really, really love this. It's just that added little benefit Right. And so if we're thinking about repeat and referral business from clients and they can continue to say like they were so responsive, they let me know everything that's happening, because I think we've um, we've gotten a, a little bit as a society of like, I want to know everything that's happening when it's happening. And I don't want to have to talk to a human being to know that, right. <laughs> um, mm. which is a little sad. Right. But we can we can add on the phone calls with that. Um, but for your clients, just to have a really great understanding of of what's happening and when it's happening, I think is a, a really, really value. Um, and again, hopefully we'll, we'll bring you guys some additional business with that. Um, so action items, I'm just gonna un, unshare for just a second. Action items, if you guys wanted any, what I think would probably be best is if you don't currently have a checklist, get with your market center administrator or your team leader, cause nine times out of 10, we find that your market center does, um, even if you don't. And so just finding out, do we have anything like that? Um, building that out, putting all of that in. So that's gonna be like the most of the work is going to be creating those checklists, but it's just a one time. Um, and so I would tell you, don't feel like you have to do everything. Rome wasn't built in a day. So if you say, I'm gonna take an hour and I'm just gonna focus on all the checklists for my sellers, you'd be shocked how quickly you can actually get it done. And then the next week, maybe we say that we're gonna go in and do it for buyers. And then we decide on each opportunity basis if we want the contact to be updated or not, and then decide which of those items. Question in chat. Um, 
Can you go back to the communication template? Yeah, absolutely, Nancy, hang on one second. So you mean the email when it's sent out, what that looks like? Uh, okay, hang on one second. Let me just reshare. So um, this is the one that I pulled. This is just the one that I sent myself earlier. And so this is, it'll be branded to you at the top. All of this pulls from your KW Connect profile. So this was probably all done when you were onboarded. So this will pull in your contact information. This will have the client's name. So if I was sending this to three clients for one particular update, this would say Sydney Seymour, this would say Jeremy Seymour, this would say Isabella Seymour, whoever I'm sending it to as they're entered into command. We're checking things off the list. Here's a summary of tasks completed for it would have the address right here. And then these would be as you wrote the items in the checklist and you said, this is completed, this is completed, this is completed. So if you had said 10 items were completed, it would show all 10. If one item was completed, it would show one. And then at the bottom again, branded to you, all of your information down there. Does that answer your question? So will you have um, text? We're checking things off the list. That's standard format. Yes, correct. And then we're getting by your side every step. That's also standard format. Yep. And we can change those or not. You cannot change these. Yeah. So there's no template, there's no work or anything you have to do on your part. The thing that is going to be branded to you is this, and then this is going to be however you worded the checklist items is how this will show up. So our deals are owned by our train maker and they're assigned to the agents. Okay. It looks like this would then be coming from the train maker. So can we change that to have it come from the agent? Yeah. So um, we can change that under client updates under a team. When we go into the opportunity, we can decide who do we want this to be sent from. So do we want it to be sent from the Rainmaker or do we want it to be sent from the agent on our team that this opportunity or this contact is assigned to? Excellent. So you'll be able to choose that here. Yeah, so it's just under where if we go into the opportunity, it's under client updates and then send from. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Great question. Thanks, Monica. I saw you dropped in chat. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, so Monica, who's one of our awesome MCTTs, uh, just dropped in a spreadsheet that she uses for North Carolina transactions. So you guys are welcome to grab that. So I'm gonna drop one more time in chat, just in case anybody wasn't here when we first started, um, just links to the recordings that are on our YouTube channel and the two links, um, one to our Facebook page as well. And then the two links on the answers article of what we covered today. Anytime that you guys are in a Zoom meeting, if you click on where you can type in chat, if you click on the three dots over to the right, the first option is going to be save chat. And then that allows you to save this as usually it comes as like a notepad or a text. Um, and so then you can do that. Are the recordings limited time-wise? I don't believe that I will take them off um, unless we do this again next year and I'll probably just move them to another playlist. But yeah, we have a, a YouTube page where I can put anything. So we'll have them up there for a while. All right, you guys, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate spending a little bit of time with all of you guys. Monica, thanks for jumping on and sharing that resource. You're awesome. And a reminder, we'll have it tomorrow. will be um, day eight of the 12 days of command, I believe. And we'll be going all through contract to close. So those of you in the beginning that said you've never done an opportunity, that might be one of the best things for you to come to. We're gonna be chatting about that um, with again, a guest instructor who, is an MCA, so has a amazing brain around how all of that works. So you guys definitely don't wanna miss that. Um, today is maybe eight, I don't know, my days are getting very confused. So I don't know what day's what, but just keep coming back till we hit 12. <laughs> all right, you guys have an awesome day and um, thank you for being here, here to help with anything you guys need. Bye guys.